Hello, I am Ibrahim Al Amiri. In this video, we will learn performance based seismic design in detail. The basic concept of performance based seismic design is to provide engineers with the capability to design buildings that have a predictable and reliable performance in earthquakes. Thus, the performance based seismic design is a process that permits design of new buildings or upgrade of existing buildings with a realistic understanding of the risk of life, occupancy, and economic loss that may occur as a result of future earthquakes. Performance based design begins with the selection of design criteria stated in the form of one or more performance objectives. Each performance objective is a statement of the acceptable risk of incurring specific levels of damage and the consequential losses that occur as a result of this damage at a specified level of seismic hazard. We have four performance objectives, operational, immediate occupancy, life safety, collapse prevention, operational, negligible impact on building, Immediate occupancy, building is safe to occupy but possibly not useful until cleanup and repair has occurred. Life safety, building is safe during event but possibly not afterward. Performance based seismic design begins with the selection of one of the performance objectives. For example, life safety. In the first attempt, we develop a preliminary design for the structural members Washover analysis is then used to evaluate performance capacity. In the second part of this video, we will explain washover analysis in detail. At the end of the first attempt, we check if the performance meets the objective. If yes, the process is complete. Otherwise, cross-sections may need to be increased or decreased. Here are some tips for beginners. For example, if you choose the life safety performance level and after analysis, you find that the performance level is immediate occupancy. That means your cross-sectional areas are too large. Likewise, if you achieve a collapse prevention performance level, it means that the cross-sectional areas need to be increased. One of the ways to evaluate the structures is the performance point. Performance point represents the state of maximum inelastic capacity of the structure. As you can see here, the red curve is called the capacity spectrum. This curve represents the structure's ability to resist seismic demand. And the black curve is called demand spectrum, which represents the earthquake ground motion. Performance point is the intersection point of demand spectrum and capacity spectrum. As we said before, washover analysis is used to evaluate the performance level of the building. Pushover analysis is a technique by which a computer model of the building is subjected to a lateral load of a certain shape. Building is pushed in one horizontal direction. The intensity of the lateral load is slowly increased and the sequence of cracks yielding plastic hang formation and failure of various structural components are recorded. In SAP 2000 or any analysis software, two model acceptance criteria are needed to indicate the level of performance. The first performance criteria is the lateral drift limits. For example, in this table, for immediate occupancy, the maximum total drift is 0 0.01 and for damage control, the maximum total drift is between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. For life safety, the maximum total drift is 0.02. The second criteria is plastic hang formation. FEMA 273, table 66, and table 67 are used to find nonlinear M theta plastic hang properties for beams and columns. As you can see here, chapter 6 concrete table 66 modeling parameters and numerical acceptance criteria for nonlinear procedures reinforced concrete beams here are the modeling parameters ABC and here is the acceptance criteria to understand the meaning of ABC and IOLS CB figure 25 explain all these parameters so as you can see here this is the component acceptance criteria and to find the coordinate for each point in this graph we need the values of a b and c also as you can see here this is the performance level for example we can see that immediate occupancy performance level before life safety and at the end we have here 
the collapse prevention and this is the failure point in the next video we will take a full example of how to use push over analysis to evaluate building performance level thank you for watching and see you in the next video